Hey, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 6 this morning, verses 25 through 34. All right, and so um, speaking of Boulder, all right, it's my it's my junior year at CSU. It's 2014. We're um, we're 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 getting ready to play CU in the Rocky Mountain Showdown um, in in Denver. And um, that year, I I had been working my butt off and um, had earned a starting position um, at right tackle. And so. Um, Man, I was excited, but I was incredibly nervous, incredibly fearful, incredibly um, had this kind of anxiety that had started to come over me the closer we got to the game. You know, it's like when you got a deadline or something you're working on, it's like the closer you get to that thing, it's like, oh, you start stressing out about it. And, and so um, I had worked really hard. And I didn't want to make a fool of myself on national television. And um, so we're, we're headed down there and... Um, Headed down to the hotel, and man, I'm, I'm, I'm stressing out, right? I'm fearful. Um, we're, we're, we're doing meetings in the hotel rooms and in the, in the meeting rooms at the hotel, and um, man, I, I'm, I'm anxious. I just got this weight on my chest, like, man, I am going to make a fool of myself. I am going to do something stupid. I'm going to jump off sides. I'm going to block the wrong guy. I'm going to get the quarterback hurt. Um, and then it's like we're, we're going to the stadium. Um, it's just continuing to build, right? Colorado State Patrol is clearing the highway, right? The buses are going right in behind. Ken being um, a super driver, he like jumps in behind and like, you know, he's in our bus line with us doing something illegal. And, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm just, man, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. And we're on the field, we're doing warm-ups, and this whole time, I just got to go to the bathroom the whole time because I am like, there's just this fear that's sitting on my chest. And I'm starting to get this feeling like, man, I am so inadequate. Like, there's no way that I should be doing this. Um, I'm going to make a fool of myself. I'm going to give up a strip sack on national television. They're going to, the guy, you know, the, the John Madden guy is going to be up there circling me with the yellow pen. And I'm going to be like, this guy right here screwed up. And, you know, it's just going to be embarrassing, right? Um, and so uh, kickoff finally happens, and um, they get the ball first, and they're, they're uh they get a couple first downs, and then it's their time to punt. And so, like, here it is. Like, we're getting ready to run on the field for the first time. And I'm just thinking, like, oh, man, I got this, uh, my guard, um, uh, right guard sitting right next to me. And, uh, or he's standing right next to me, and he kind of looks like a short, fat version of Sasquatch. And, um, <laughs> and he's from Georgia, and he looked, he's like, hey, Sam, like, are you as nervous as I am? And I'm like, dude, like, yes. Like, why don't you guys seem like you're nervous like I am? Like, because... There was three other guys starting for the first time, too. And uh, I'm like, why do I, why am I the only one who seems like they're nervous here? And uh, he's like, man, I, I, man, I'm about to, you know, go to the bathroom right here. Like, I, I gotta, I gotta, you know, let's just see what happens, you know? And uh, so he go, we go out there on the field. Like, I know the play, um, the first play of the game's going away from me. So I know, like, if I screw up, it's not going to be too bad. Um, so, like... I'm like, okay, all right, let's do this. And so we get down in our stance, and the quarterback starts his cadence. He's like, Blue 80, Blue 80. And like literally right before the ball's getting snapped, Fred throws up like right on the field. And, um, um, <laughs> and it's funny to think about now, but it was like at the time, it was like the last thing you wanted to see before you started playing. It's like, all right, what's my responsibility? What's my responsibility? Throw up, what? Like, and then distraction. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of like random, but uh, as the as the game went on, right, um, that fear and anxiety started to recede based on the preparation that had gone into um, what what is the opponent going to do? What is the guy that I'm going to face? What is what are his tendencies? What is what are his moves? What does he like to do when he's rushing the quarterback? Right. So all that fear, anxiety, nervousness started to fade based on the preparation that was put into it. But um, this morning we're going to talk about fear. We're going to talk about stress, anxiety, worry, all those things that kind of can be coupled together into uh, one thing. And so I'm just going to call it by a couple different uh, words this morning, but most of all, it's going to be fear. And so um, maybe instead of, um, you know, me worrying about, you know, football and throw up and stuff like that, like maybe you're here and you're, you're, you got worry and fear about making your mortgage payment. Right? You got fear and worry about putting gas in your tank. You got um, um, fear or worry about um, some, some concerning test results to come back from the doctor. Um, 
Maybe you're, you're, you're fearing losing a loved one or you're, you're fearing about people finding out who you really are or your, your deepest, darkest secret coming to light, right? And there, there are so many things that, that cause fear um, in us, right? Uh, Gallup, a Gallup poll came out a couple years back that found out uh, worry and stress is up 60% since COVID and it has not dropped off since then, right? Considering the political climate we're in, um, inflation, the economy, uh, right? The, uh, the war in Ukraine, like all this stuff um, has just caused anxiety to just stay up, right? And it's stressing us out. It's making us fearful. Um, and um, I mean, like, seriously, like how many of you by showing of hands would say you faced fear and anxiety at some point, Right? Okay, that's, I mean, that's, that's a lot of people. If you didn't raise your hand, you're a liar, okay, and you need to repent for that, okay? So, um, praise God, like, there's gospel for you today. Um, <laughs> I'm just fooling. Um, but, hey, fear, fear, anxiety, worry, like, that's common. Like, you look to your left, your right, like, everyone around here has experienced it. So you're not alone in that, okay? But that's not how you were created, right? In Genesis one and two, you see that God creates a perfect world, right? He places the, the sun in the sky, the moon in the night sky, puts the stars, names every single one of them, right? Place, or, uh, uh, creates all the, the animals, has Adam name them, right? And Adam and Eve aren't, aren't you know, worrying about where their next meal is going to come from. They're not out here like, gosh, dang it, like I know God just created this thing, but man, it looks good. I really want to eat it, right? They're not, they're not worrying about anything. Every need that they have has been provided for because they know God is who he says he is, right? And so um, you see this turn happen um, in Genesis chapter 3 when sin, when sin finally enters the world, right? When man makes a poor choice, um, you see uh, sin enter the world. And at the same time, you get fear, anxiety, worry, stress, all the above enter because of the, the, the choice that man made, right? And it's almost at the, at the exact same time, um, you can imagine like being Adam and, and God saying to him like, from the dirt you were created and the dirt you will return. And it's like at that point, like death is imminent and it's just a matter of time. And so, um, it's important to note that like, you, weren't, you weren't created to fear, right? We're going to talk about this later, um, but now that fear is in the world, like some, some fear is good, right? We're going to talk about fear of the Lord is a good thing. The Bible talks about that. There are some fears that we have that keep us safe, um, but fear for the most part was not, you weren't created to fear. And uh, the Bible repeatedly states, um, it's the most repeated phrase throughout the Bible is, is do, do not fear, Right? God is our provider. Isaiah 41.10 says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. All right, and so um, let's pray, and then we'll, we'll dive into the scripture for today. Lord, we love you. We love you, Father. We, we know that, uh, that, that fear, worry, and anxiety is not from you, Father. And you've given us the tools in your word to overcome it and to face it and to walk through it stronger on the other side, Father. So we love you this morning. I pray, Lord, that I would just be a, a, a mouthpiece as to what you have to say, and I would not uh, say anything that you would not have me to say or that would be out of bounds um, for us today, Father. So we love you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, is everybody in Matthew chapter 6, except for me? All right, so we're going to be in verse 25, and so it says, uh, this is Jesus talking. He says, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. It's kind of interesting here. He's saying, is not life more than just what you eat and just what you wear? Isn't that interesting to think about? And so you see here in the first line, uh, it says, therefore I say to you, do not worry. So uh, the Greek uh, word for worry right here is mir em nao. Can everybody say that? Mir em nao. Okay. And that means to divide into parts, to divide into parts. And that's what worry does. It divides. 
It divides your thoughts so you can't see the whole picture, right? It divides um, in, in, in a way that you're almost like tunnel vision. You can only see the negative. You can only see the worst case scenario. It only takes you to a place where worst case scenario, worst case scenario, worst case scenario. If this bad happens, if this bad happens, if this bad happens, oh no, kind of a thing, rather than seeing the whole part of it, right? And uh, the, the word miram now uh, suggests a distraction, a preoccupation with things causing anxiety, stress, and pressure, right? It's a preoccupation with things. Everybody hear that? It's a, you're preoccupied with something, right? And so that kind of brings me to um, um, my first point of the day, which is the more value you put on a thing, the more fear and anxiety will surround that thing, okay? So um, I, I, I use this as like, I used to drive a, a 2004 Chevy Tahoe with about 200,000 miles on it, and uh, it was the most faithful car I've ever owned in my life. Like, the thing was solid, right? And, um, but it wasn't the prettiest thing you've ever seen, right? Um, had, a, had a windshield, had a couple dents here and there, Candace straight up backed into it, um, and <laughs> dented the door, I love you, there's grace for you too. Um, <laughs> uh, but I, I wasn't going around like, oh my gosh, like somebody scratched my Chevy Tahoe, like, and then, you know, key somebody's car, punch a tire, you know, like, like that's, that, I wasn't doing that, right? Because this car, you know, it meant something to me, but it wasn't like the end all vehicle, right? Um, I cannot take that same train of thought for my Ford Mustang, right? Um, if, if I'm very careful where I park it, right? You park it over here, don't let anybody touch it, right? Don't take it down any dirt roads. Um, we were very careful with it. And I cannot tell you the amount of stress and fear and anxiety that came over me when we're ending practice a couple weeks back and it starts to hail. And I'm, I did not look at the weather that day. Like I assumed it was going to be good. Like Oh, man, like I'm locking up the gates and everything. Practice just got done. Coach um, is somewhere else. So I'm like in charge of locking everything up. And I can't get this stupid lock to lock as it's starting to hail. And so like I finally get it. And I'm just thinking dead run to my car. Like we got to get home. And um, unfortunately, we did sustain some damage. But we got it fixed. We're good. But you can see the difference based on the value that I put on that thing, right? I, I, I held, I hold this Mustang up here, Tahoe's like way down here, Mustang up here. More stress, anxiety, and fear surrounds this vehicle based on the value that I've put on it. Does that make sense to you guys this morning, right? And so it, as, as we kind of level up here, um, money, money. Can everybody say like money's important? Okay, nobody was raising their hands. We're not gonna take an offering, right? We already did. Like, it's okay. All right, don't, don't worry, okay? Um, but um, we, we could all agree here that money's important. We use it to, to buy our houses, to buy um, clothing, shelter, food, right? Necessities. But if we hold money and give it more value than what is necessary, then you will only find that fear, worry, stress, anxiety surrounds money, and it will steal all the joy out of, out of life at that point. Yes, thank you. It will steal the joy out of what it takes to, to provide necessities, right? And so um, um, we can keep, keep moving forward here, right? Um, in your relationships, right? Specifically, like parents with your kids. Like, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, a parent, uh, but I've been parented, and um, <laughs> like, if you, if you exalt and place so much of a value on your relationship with your kids to the point where you're fearful about like them taking a step out of the door, right? The, the classic helicopter technique as a parent, you know, you're just hovering over them. Um, that will steal the joy out of that relationship, right? It will, it will rob them of experiences that will teach them life lessons, right? Um, as parents, um, I'm not, again, I'm not a parent, but um, I believe it's your job to lead them towards adulthood, right? To raise them in the admonition of the Lord so when they're old, they will not depart from it. But if you never allow them to leave the house, how will they experience life, right? How will they ever fall or fail if they're never allowed to fall or fail, 
right? I'm so happy my parents allowed me to, um, to go to a public school, to go to a public university, right? We weren't, um, um, I don't think that they'd ever allow that now, um, nor would I, based on what's going on in the public schools. But um, they wanted us to be a light to um, the kids in the school. And, and um, uh, based on the fact that they didn't hover, hover over us or, or helicopter technique, like, I failed. I failed a lot in life, and I, and I did things that, um, you know, my parents would frown upon and that I've asked for repentance or asked for a, a, a forgiveness for, right? And the Bible is, is so good. It, it, it says um, that if you raise your kids in the admonition of the Lord when they're old, they won't depart from it, right? And so I, I challenge you with that today. If you raise your kids in that way when they're old and when they're, when they're struggling with something and when they, they seem like there's no way out, they'll return to how you taught them to be, right? So that's my challenge to you today. So, but, but again, we can't, we can't elevate those relationships to a place where they cause us to fear over those relationships because it will only steal the joy out of those, okay? Everybody getting that this morning? You guys good? Awake? All right, here we go. Verse 26. So it says, uh, Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more of value than they? Right, and so this, this isn't saying, right, uh, based on my last point that, hey, you know what, I'm just going to sit back. I'm scared about this mortgage payment, but you know what? Hey, God's got me. I ain't going to go work. I don't need to work. God's got me. Right, I guarantee you, if you do that, you will not be making your mortgage payment that month, right? Um, you, you, if, if there's something like a treatment or, or something, a breakthrough with your health that you're waiting for, Right, and the doctor's giving you a recommended treatment plan. And if you're saying, no, doc, um, I respectfully disagree. God's got me. Um, I, I, this will heal. God will heal me. I don't need to take any of your recommended healing plans or anything like that. Like, hey, I guarantee you that that healing will not take place in the way that you want it to if you're not taking the doctor's recommended um, healing plans. Right? There, there are some keys where maybe that's not appropriate, but for the most part, if you're not working yourself, how can you expect the Lord to work for you as well, right? If, if I'm not going out there grinding at my job, um, how could I expect the Lord to work on my, by my behalf also? Does that make sense to you guys this morning, right? And so um, it, you see here in verse 26 that um, Jesus references birds, right? And um, a lazy bird is a dead bird, right? Um, like, I don't know that you've ever seen like a lazy bird that's just like, he's got the biggest nest and he's got, you know, the most offspring. Like that don't usually happen with lazy bird. Lazy bird is probably a dead bird. Um, and so, um, birds, like they're always doing something, right? They're always either grabbing sticks for the nest or, or hunting some, or killing something, bringing food back to the babies or, or like rubbing the eggs to keep them warm in the nest or whatever they do, right? Uh, um, like, I don't know what they do. <laughs> they got to keep them warm somehow. Um, but, but, yeah, that. Um, but, but, but Jesus is saying, like, God provides for them. And where they fall short, that's where he provides for them. So after all that they, they, after they've done all that they can do to provide for themselves, that's where God fills in the gap and says, here you go. Here's your sustenance for today, right? And so um, as we move forward, verse 27 says, which of you by worrying can add one more cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Right? And so it's talking about Solomon here. And Solomon was the king of Israel at a time when it was the literal, like the pinnacle of um, Israel's success. Right? Um, Solomon had asked for wisdom. God gave that to him, and he used that wisdom to take um, Israel to a place based on their... Um, uh, um, uh, allegiance to God, right? They were, they were uh, uh, listening to God and, and they weren't going their own way, doing their own thing. But um, Jesus here is saying that, like, this, this guy was king of Israel at the height 
of Israel's success, and yet I'm dressing the lilies of the field and the grass higher than what I dressed him. And this grass tomorrow, we're just going to throw it in the oven and use it to make cake, right? Um, But if I'm dressing the grass like that, how much more would I dress you and provide for you, one who was created in my image, right? Does that make sense to you guys this morning, right? And, and, and so um, uh, moving on here, it says, therefore, do not, uh, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear for all these things, for after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. Verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Right? So that brings me to my second point of the day, which is seek first the kingdom. Seek first the kingdom. Easier said than done. But seeking first the kingdom remakes your, priority, your priorities. Right? Something that seemed important before knowing Christ is no longer important as it was. Right? And something that, on the other hand, that's man, this did not seem as important before I knew Christ, before I was chasing and seeking him. Now this is the most vital thing, right? Before, before you took, I mean, being honest, before you took your, your relationship with Christ seriously, how often were you reaching out to somebody and sharing the gospel with them? All right, it's something you probably just like, uh, they want to know, but yeah, like God is good, man. Yeah, have a good day, right? It, But once you start to take that seriously and understanding like, hey, if this person doesn't know Christ, he's going to to spend an eternity separated from him. I've got to tell him. I've got to tell him something, right? And so that's that's something that can help alleviate fear is simply by seeking after the kingdom, seeking after the things that, 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 that breaks God's heart, also breaks ours, right? Seeking after the things that are important to God, those things become important to us. Right? It's that rearrangement of the priorities can help alleviate some of the fear, stress, and anxiety that plagues us. Right? And so kind of going along with that, right? Um, any fear, whether legitimate or illegitimate, will look foolish 200 years from now. Right? When you're in the presence of God, when, when you're standing before him and his glory is just emanating, just overwhelming, like me worrying about you know, making a fool of myself on national television is going to seem absolutely just comical, you know? Um, but that's not to say, like, what, whatever stress or worry or fear that you have right now isn't meaningful, right? It's, it's to merely say that if you seek his kingdom first and his righteousness, all of those things will be added to you in this life or the next, okay? And, 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 and that's really what matters, right? Because 200 years from now, again, 200 years from now, the fear that you have, the worry, the anxiety, that's going to seem meaningless. It's going to seem silly, right? Um, but while we're here on this earth, right, Psalm 55, 22 says, cast your burden on the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved, all right, and so um, the word sustain there in Psalm 55, the Hebrew, it's, it's he, uh, the Hebrew word is cool, C-H-U-L. So you better remember that, right? Hey, God's going to sustain me, man. That's cool, right? You can use that, and, and bring, that's really extremely cheesy. But um, <laughs> I don't know. You'll remember it now. Um, it's cool, right? Sustain in Hebrew is cool. It means to nourish, provide food, to bear, to hold up, to protect to support, and to defend, right? And so when that fear and anxiety seems like it's coming over, you can cast that on the Lord, and you can trust him to sustain you. You can trust him to provide, to bear, to hold up, to protect, to support you, and to defend you, right? And so that's a promise that we can stand on that will help alleviate that fear, so as we're, as we're moving forward here in uh, verse 34, it says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Isn't it crazy how like, like worrying about the things of tomorrow can quench the joy of today? Right? And so it's like, <laughs> 
if I'm so concerned about what uh, is going to go on on Monday, tomorrow, or, 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 or next week, it can steal the joy of how God has provided for me today, right? How God has, has put clothes on my back today, right? Yesterday, I went to the grocery store. I got $150 worth of food. I got like a gallon of milk and two pieces of cereal, right? For, for 150 bucks. It's like, oh, geez, man. Like, all right, it's a real deal. But it's like, man, praise, praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for your provision in my life. Thank you, God, God for providing for me and putting a roof over my head and shoes on my feet and cars in the garage and a job that provides for me. Lord, thank you for that, right? And if I'm so worried about what's going on tomorrow, it can cause me to not show the proper gratitude for the things I have today, right? And so fear can steal that joy, right? And so um, this kind of um, like worrying, worrying about what's going to happen next, next week can also cause us to disobey uh, what God has called us to do, right? And this is the biggest thing that fear can do is it can lead us um, to sin. Fear, uh, which is my third point, fear that leads to unbelief or disobedience is sin, and, and this kind of ties into what I was talking about earlier. Like, not all fear is bad, right? Fear, that, um, fear of going to jail will probably, you know, stop you from going 20 miles over the speed limit, right? Fear of getting pulled over will, will hopefully, some of you, maybe not, I don't know, you, you just go as fast as you want to. Um, um, but, like, that fear stops you from doing those things. Fear of the Lord is a good thing, right? The Bible talks about having a righteous, um, reverential fear for God is a good thing. And it's a wise thing to fear the Lord. And, um, but a fear that would keep you from being honest about your faith in Jesus is sinful, right? That is sinful fear, right? Fear that you won't get um, a, a job because you don't believe that God can provide for you that would be a sinful fear, right? And so we can't allow this fear to, to, to take us to a place where we don't believe that God is who he says he is. Many people believe that that's all fear is. Fear is a belief that God isn't who he says he is, right? God is unable to provide, therefore, fear. God can't bring healing here, therefore, fear. God can't provide, therefore, fear. And so... Um, I love this quote by A.W. Tozer. He says, I'm not too worried about the judgment on my Christian life. It's the things that I could have done but didn't do that worry me. And so um, as I kind of start to, to um, bring this thing to a, to a close, um, we're all going to stand before the Father one day. And um, if you've professed to um, putting your faith in Christ and um, claiming him as, as, as Lord and Savior, then you're going to be welcomed in. But what is he going to say about the opportunities that you were too, for, too fearful to seize? What is he going to say, um, you know, Sam, like, hey, I gave, you, I gave you these talents and abilities. Why didn't you act on that? Why did you allow this fear to overcome you? I told you, and I gave you all the tools in Scripture to overcome that fear. Why didn't you reach out to this person? Now this person has to spend eternity separated from me based on the fact that you would not reach out to them. You would not care. Right? Oh, or, or luckily, like I was able to raise someone else up to reach out to that person. But why didn't, why didn't you follow through on the, the, the gifts, talents, and abilities that I gave you, the opportunities that I gave you to, to share the gospel with somebody? But you let this fear overcome you that, that halted you from that. And that fear was not from me. And um, uh, we read this book in, in men's, uh, men's group a couple, uh, I think it was last year or so, and, and I was kind of diving into it to see what it had mentioned about fear. And the author um, was talking about how um, in Revelation, it says uh, where Jesus will wipe every, every tear from their eye. He, he's, um, him, along with a couple of the authors, believe that Jesus is wiping the tears from their eyes based on the regret that they have of not following through on the opportunities that God gave them to reach other people, right? And so that's my challenge to you today. Like, don't, don't let fear stop you. Don't let fear um, hold you back from being who God has called you to be. Um, I know there's, there's very real fears in this room. There's very real struggles, very real pains that, that you guys are facing. And no one's saying that that's illegitimate. 
but just understand and trust that God is who he says he is. That, that although things seem dark and you don't see a way out, there is light at the end of the tunnel in this life or the next because the next one is what really matters. You guys have all seen uh, on, on the illustrations where it shows how, how minute this life on earth is and how eternity is what matters. And so uh, um, in, in 1 John 4.18 it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Right? And so just trust and stand on the perfect love of God this morning that his love for you on the cross, has the ability to overcome and cast out that fear. And so um, as, I, as I'm closing this up, um, I uh, used to live with Ken and Candace um, a couple years back, and there's this thing that Olivia would do where she would climb up on the counter, and she'd say, Uncle C, I want to do the caca. And um, the caca is basically where she like, comes to the edge of the counter, and like jumps off and like flaps her wings like a bird and because he tries to fly. And I would catch her, right? And so we do this thing where she's like, oh, see, I want to do the caca. And she just to come get a running start off the counter and just jump. And sometimes I would have, I, I would straight up have my back turned like this and she'd be back over there and she'd say, oh, see, I'm doing the caca. And she'd jump and I'd turn around and see her in the middle, midair and be like, oh no, like, and grab her like that, right? And um, it's it's just cool to see like the faith of like a, a little child like that right because like she's like knows full well that I was going to catch her if she jumped off of there and um, I only dropped her a couple times no I'm just kidding <laughs> you weren't home no I'm just kidding um no, I, I, I never dropped her, right? And so it, it, it developed this relationship where she knew if she jumped off there and said, Uncle, see, I'm doing the caca, ca, and she's going flying off there. Like, I was going to catch her no matter where I was in the house, right? And, um, man, I just, I just challenge you this morning. Like, I know you're not jumping off the counter doing the caca, ca, but it's like if whatever fear or stress or anxiety that you're facing this morning, just know that... Like it's, it's like all state, like you're in good hands. Like, like there's, there's a, there is a faithful father who is there willing, perfectly able to catch you. Um, there, there's no height um, that you could jump from that, that would scare him. And so that's my challenge to you today is just uh, if there's a fear that, that is causing you to be to be disobedient or, or to, to, to walk in, in sin. Um, and I would just challenge you to trust God that he is who he says he is and that if you, if you fall, he is there to catch you. Our God has strong arms, amen? He has strong arms and he is um, perfectly willing and able to assist you in, in, in every every issue or problem. So if you want to stand, we're, we're going to close in prayer this morning. So if you just want to uh, close your eyes and, and bow your heads. Um, man, this is just kind of a reflective moment. If you, if you say, um, Sam, I'm struggling with some real fear right now and it is causing a divide. It's causing me to, it's causing uh, pain in my relationships. It's causing me stress in ways that I couldn't even imagine. Would you just raise your hand so we know how we can pray for you this morning? All right, would you just raise your hand? Thank you. Thank you. We see those hands going up. We see those hands going up. Thank you. Thank you. Man, God is good. He has strong arms and he is able to catch you. So we just, uh, we just lifted up this morning. Father, we thank you for today, Lord Jesus. We thank you that um, uh, we, we know that fear is not from you, Father. We know that uh, uh, in your word it says that uh, perfect love, your perfect love for us casts out fear. And so that's the promise that we stand on today, Father, that, that, that you are who you say you are, that you provide for the birds. How can you not provide for us, Father? 
You, you dress the lilies of the field and the grass that's going to be burned tomorrow, but yet you provide for us. Father, so we stand on the promise of who you are today, Lord God. Help us to walk out of here and just face life in a whole new way, knowing that, that you are there to catch us in the middle of fear, in the middle of stress, in the middle of worry. Father, we know that we can cast our burdens on you and you will sustain us. You will sustain us to the end, to the point where, where, where you say, my faithful servant, welcome home. Lord, I, I just pray that you would help us not to miss any opportunity that you have for us to reach out, to, to share the gospel, to, to love someone in a way. I pray that fear would not be that, uh, that barrier that holds us from doing that, Father. We love you this morning. It's your name we pray. Amen.